Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Melissa Cano, and my research topic is determining the density of the ionic liquid C10MPY-TF2N confined in silica nanopores using small and wide angle x-ray scattering. And my advisor is Dr. Jose Leo Bañuelos. What is an ionic liquid? An ionic liquid is a salt that consists of cations and anions in a liquid phase at room temperature. In the diagram shown below, you can see common cations and common anions, and when they are paired together, they form an ionic liquid. If you remember in chemistry, this happens when the ion pair consists of a positive ion and a negative ion temporarily bonded together by an electrostatic force attraction between them. These room temperature ionic liquids, RTIL for short, contain many unique properties, such as negligible volatility, which means that the ionic liquid doesn't evaporate in atmospheric temperature and pressure. They are highly electrochemical, which is production of electricity by chemical changes, and they also have high thermal stability, making the ionic liquid have more resistance to decomposition at high temperatures. Why even study ionic liquids? RTILs have many potential applications. They are useful for nuclear reprocessing, which is the recovery of metals from spent nuclear fuel, as well as an extraction of more energy from the same amount of natural resources to produce less nuclear waste. They are powerful solvents. RTILs can be used as biocatalysts. They can be used in chemical processing, protein crystallization, nanoparticle synthesis, and polymerization. Ionic liquids have been applied also for nanolubrication, supercapacitors, and solar cells. Water can also be replaced by ionic liquids as the electrolytes in metal air batteries. Objective. This project concentrates on the density of RTIL, C10MPY, TF2N confined in two silica pores. It is known that the dynamics, structure, and the phase transition temperature of RTILs are changed once they are confined. This behavior of RTILs in confinement is key for the study and their application in lubrication, energy storage devices, as well as in other fields. RTIL confinement in CPG and MCM41. In my research, we have the RTIL confined in two different silica nanopores. The silica pores are CPG and MCM41. They have different diameters. The CPG has a diameter of 8.1 nanometers and MCM has a diameter of 2.8 nanometers. CPG stands for controlled pore glass and it is produced from a borosilicate based material which is then heated to separate the borates and silicates the borates are then leached out from the material leaving the silica glass with uniform controlled pores these porous glasses are ideal for material separation because of their small pore size distribution with high surface area MCM stands for mobile composition of matter and consists of an arrangement of cylindrical mesopores that form a one-dimensional pore system. It is characterized by an independently adjustable pore diameter, sharp pore distribution, large surface area, and large pore volume. Small and wide angle x-ray scattering. Wide angle x-ray scattering is similar to small angle x-ray scattering, except the distance from sample to detector is shorter 
and because of that, diffraction maxima at larger angles are observed. Depending on the instrument used, it is possible to perform both wax and sax, which our machine does. It's the Zeus 2.0 by Xenox. Sax is an analytical technique that measures the intensities of x-rays scattered by a sample as a function of the scattering angle. I drew a diagram to explain how sax works. An x-ray source is emitted into the sample or solvent and most of the radiation passes through the sample without having an interaction. The scattered x-ray beam creates a wave vector of Q and the scattered waves are recorded onto the detector where a scattering pattern is formed and a scattering curve is obtained. You then apply a model and adjust the model until a compact shape is found that fits the scattering curve that matches to the experimental data. This gives structural information by measuring the scatter X-ray intensity versus Q, where Q is four pi sine theta over wavelength. Methods. The ionic liquid and silica mixtures were prepared by adding enough RTIL to fill the silica pores, assuming bulk density. Now this bulk density is the density of the ionic liquid itself, not being in confinement. The samples were then heated to 70 degrees Celsius and were put into vacuum for 24 hours. On the figure on the right, I just have the calculations pertaining to this research. And the reduced data was normalized by dividing the sample thickness as well as the silica mass. Results. The data was measured in two different sample to detector distances of 156 and 1200 millimeters for a period of 30 minutes. Our Q range was 0.01 to 3 inverse angstroms. Each of the silica nanopores is filled with the ionic liquid, hence RTIL-CPG, RTIL-MCM. We also measured the MPCPG, MCM, and RTIL to observe the behavior. On the top column, you can see CPG versus RTIL, and on the bottom column, you can see MCM versus RTIL-MCM. To the right of each graph, you can see the corresponding peaks we concentrated on to analyze the shift and calculate the density. As we analyze the data, we also notice how the higher Q range in these new measurements can give access to inter-ion distances. The peaks in the ionic liquid show some differences at higher Q. We can observe the intermolecular distances in analyzing how the peaks in the data shift in the ionic liquid. Now, by analyzing the changes in the silica pore to pore correlation peak, we obtained an estimate of the confined RTIL density. Results and feature applications. The density is lower in smaller pores. The confined RTIL density was obtained by comparing the intensity at the peaks of the empty and filled RTIL samples. We concluded that the density in CPG was 91% the bulk density and the density in MCM was 86% the bulk density. And remember that bulk density is the density of the RTIL, not in confinement. With our findings in the future, we will use the scattering invariant to find the fraction of silica and the fraction of ionic liquid in the total volume. This gives the density of the ionic liquid at nanoscale and be able to compare to our initial estimates of density. One advantage of the invariant is that it uses the full range of scattering data instead of just the peak. This brings my presentation to a conclusion. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoyed it and take care.